a really interesting point about the Jays leading the AL in attendance, and I don't think all who read it agreed with it, but it stimulates something in, in me that says his argument is with full ball with a full bar ballpark, JP, what is the impetus for Shapiro and, and Atkins to make massive changes? And and this happens in other sports. This was the argument about the Cubs at Wrigley for years, or the Knicks, or the Maple Leafs. If the if the house is full, if the merchandise is, is going out the door, if the food and drinks going out the door, why alienate your fan base by moving? players that 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 fans do like right well greg that's a great point and and that's what the jays are debating right now what i would say is this the the baseball reasons to for them to consider trades for jay happ and donaldson let's say would be that uh, twofold number one you've got the oldest opening day roster in baseball this year and and you look at it and say well if we've got the oldest team in baseball this year and things are not going that great and, and we've got a losing record what are the odds that if we keep this same group together or most of this group together in 2018, it's going to be a better result? And I would say the odds probably aren't that great, really, although you, you, you would hope to get better health from the likes of Sanchez. You would say he's young enough where, where you would expect that his health will be better. And, of course, missing Donaldson for as long as they did, that they'll have better health with him next year uh, and a better season from him. Uh, but you look at the bigger picture as well in the division. The AL East is only going to get harder, I believe. You've got the Yankees getting younger and, and getting better. You've got the Red Sox, who despite some, some pitching missteps uh, with Porcello and Price, look really good right now, I think collectively top to bottom. And, and so the Yankees, if they end up signing a Harper, if they sign a Machado in the future, they're only going to get tougher to deal with. So uh, I think that from a baseball standpoint, you say, yeah, you know what, now is probably the time to retrench and, and maybe get younger so that way our next window will hit it well in, in three, to three years down the line, whatever it is. But that's not what the Jays want to do. Right now they're, they're saying that they, to your point, Greg, the, the, the stadium is full, mm-hmm. that they don't want to all of a sudden pull the rug out from their fans who have filled it up and in, in, in led the league in attendance of back-to-back years coming off of back-to-back ALCS appearances. So they're going to do the best they can, I think, to try to have a, a quick retool on the fly, if you will, get what talent they can, because the overall organizational picture is good. They've got Bichette, they've got Vlad Jr., but I think right now it's it's a quandary. Greg, it really is, but I think for now that they see more value and virtue in staying the course than tearing it up. With our baseball insider, John Morosi from MLB Network and Fox Sports. Again, uh, Jays and Tigers tonight, 7 o'clock, Sportsnet 590, the fan and Sportsnet. Uh, Jays will see Justin Verlander. What's the snag? What's what's holding up a possible Detroit Tiger trade to somebody? It seems like what his his uh, market value, is, is it the contract? What's going on there? Well, it's a couple things. I think number one is numbers haven't been great this season, although his last outing against the Indians was maybe his best of the year. His stuff was electric that night. His, his two-seamer was moving, darting all over the strike zone and outside of it as well. So good signs there. However, as you point out, it's a big contract, $28 million each of the next two seasons, which I think has turned off some clubs. I can tell you from talking to sources that the Cubs did at least inquire on Verlander. They watched him. Uh, and clearly they, they decided they wanted to go with Quintana, and certainly I don't blame them. Uh, I think Quintana's a, a longer-term buy at a more reasonable price point from a standpoint of his salary, and he's probably pitched better over the last uh, year and a half. So Verlander, from what I was told, things are quiet now. Uh, there was a time even a week or so ago, 10 days ago, where I thought, well, maybe this first start out of the break against the Jays, this might be Verlander's final start at Comerica Park as a Tiger. Right now, I, I think that there's at least a 50-50 chance that he actually stays in Detroit beyond the deadline, just because there has not been quite as much interest as the Tigers hoped there would be, although I still look at the Dodgers and the Astros as decent possibilities down the line. How do you think it all ends? We were t- kicked this around a lot yesterday, JP, uh, for, for Jose Bautista. There's so many layers because there's the here and now, which is would he wave a 10-5 and five as a 10-5 and five player? Would there be a market? Would the Jays push him to go? Um, we all agree the return wouldn't be very much. But the offseason, you'd probably agree, is even more intriguing. There was no market for him. He's another year older, and out, and he was terrible in April, awesome in May, went back and looked more like the hitter in April. It's There's a lot of different layers to the onion about how this could all end for a, for a 37-year-old Jose Bautista. Oh, very good points, Greg. And, and I think the, the way you look at Bautista, I think, is, is spot on because, to me, 
I'll I'll start here. The fact that there was not much of a market for him last wintertime, and there were some teams that had interest, but it was not a broad market, and some of them, like Oakland, for example, they're not going to buy him now. Mm -hmm. And he's probably most comfortably for many teams an American League player, and he certainly is going to turn 37 years of age in the month of October. So there's a lot working against him. I think if if I had to guess right now, based on what I – what I've heard from sources and the way things are going right now in the marketplace, I think I think he's still Blue Jay on August 1st. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the option will get handled, uh, I'm sure, in the wintertime. I have to think. You, do you think, they pick, you think they pick it up? And he, well, and... I, I think in general they are going to look to get younger and more left-handed. We had this conversation last wintertime too, though. I think they're going to want to get more left-handed and younger, which means potentially a different right fielder and slash DH in, in 2018. But then again, I was wrong about that last offseason as well.